Good morning. How's it going out there, folks? Welcome back here to a Sunday, 1034 a.m. California time here. Still got a little squeak in my voice. February 23rd, 2025 is the date. There's that six-pointer showing up around the uh, Solomon Islands area, right in that little seismic gap zone here that's been, well, quiet of earthquake activity while everything else around it is quite busy. Uh, 6.0 coming in fairly deep, 48 miles deep here. Uh, into uh, the region just north of Port Villa, Vanuatu region. Uh, let's see if I can bring up a different model. A lot of times we'll see the name of this trench zone out here, but I'm not seeing it show up on the graph. Uh, either way, it's definitely um, a decent earthquake, six-pointer. It's been a few days since we've had any larger scale activity. Pretty good swarm of movement here across the... Uh, uh, area to the west along the plate boundary just outside of Port Moresby that uh, is in the Solomon Sea area number of fives out there nothing in the six range but uh, uh, it's possible we could see some larger activity within this region just due to all the uh, dynamics out here recently a lot of deeper activity here in the last couple weeks and uh, of course swarms of activity around this region so we'll fill this area in quite nicely and that's happening today with a six-pointer uh, within the last 15 minutes or so. Around the Solomon Islands, no tsunami associated with this. It's too small of an earthquake. And um, just, yeah, you got to have those bigger quakes in the area or in a um, region that's, uh, that can displace water. Six-pointer, obviously a big earthquake away from populated areas. So, uh, of course, that's the largest earthquake out here in the last 24 hours. Uh, check out, checking out the West Coast, California area. Got a number of earthquakes out there yesterday. See if we got anything stirring up today. The majority of these from yesterday, as far as the three-pointers go. It's been quite active out here today. Um, not so much. Uh, a little bit of movement across Nevada. Handful of smaller quakes in your typical zones there, the San Jacinto Fault Zone. The San Andreas Fault, uh, pretty quiet aside from that three-pointer from yesterday. Nothing new to report there today. Uh, up along the uh, plate boundary here, San Francisco, pretty quiet, not showing any earthquake activity. Got uh, Northern California up here, Cascadia subduction zone, quiet as well. Look at the uh, Pacific Northwest. As we zoom in here, number of earthquakes from uh, yesterday and today. Just a handful throughout the area. Over the last week or so, i uh, seen a, a lot more earthquake activity than normal out here across the entire western area here of the states and also included up here in vancouver canada area where that 4.8 struck here uh, just a couple days ago so um, a lot of pressurization going on out here across the west coast and inland areas that is the time to be prepared when we see elevated activity like that for now though no large earthquake activity to report but uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on it as things have been quite active out here. Uh, Texas oil field still getting hit with uh, a little bit of activity. Nothing major going on there. Ones and occasional twos and occasional five pointers, right? The five pointers are uh, seem like they happen every oh every few months or so. I think within the last. 30 days, there was been at least one five-pointer outside of Pecos, Texas. Big-time oil fields out here. And they do get hit uh, with some pressurization events on occasion. Uh, more than likely, we'll see this ramp up this coming week uh, in terms of uh, elevated seismic activity out there. It takes a little while for pressurization events to take, take effect. Let's see what else we got out here across the region. Uh, look at that, a lot of activity from yesterday in the red circles. Um, not a whole lot new to report here across this region of the world. Uh, just your typical twos out there along the Perugile Trench. The Atlantic Ocean, pretty quiet. No new activity to report across the Iceland area following that 5.1 up around the uh, Barabunga Volcano region. Santorini area looks a little bit uh, more active today with a number of threes and twos. So let's run over and check that out real quick here's a recorded uh, seismograph station out there uh, not quite as active 
and as dramatic looking on the chart as we had witnessed here in the last couple weeks. Although it uh, looks like maybe some increasing magnitudes here in the last few hours across this area of Santorini, Greece area. Here's the uh, latest seismogram viewer. 660 events here in the last week. As um, far as the latest activity goes, let's see, 2.5, a couple other twos in there. Uh, I know we've had a, a three-pointer, so I don't want to go that far back. Literally had a little piece of paper here on the desk that's blocking my my view of this little chart here. So three-pointer right in the middle of everything. A couple other twos in there as well. Basically just centered around that earthquake swarming region there. Uh, still a little bit of migration. In fact, a little area back over here uh, that's been somewhat elevated in the last couple days. But just a little pause in between the heightened earthquake activity here that we've seen. And over the last few days here of a, a little bit quieter uh, conditions, but still kind of keeping an eye on it. Uh, I don't think we're over yet with the uh, that sequence of events. Uh, some deeper activity here across the um, western side here of the Himalayas. That actually looks well inland. Now let's see where that's at. Eastern Afghanistan. Should have known, right? Those deeper earthquakes happen quite often out there. 4.2 and a couple other earthquakes in that uh, little sequence of events there. Uh, the rest of the area, there's a bunch of fives here from yesterday along the Java Trench, but uh, I don't know. That's a lot of activity out here on the globe, specifically in this region. Quite a cluster going on, including today's six-pointer out in that little seismic gap zone. But uh, it makes sense here. We've seen a lot of deeper activity here across the Tonga Trench, jumping over this region, and then obviously showing elevated movement across the rest of the plate boundary. So it makes sense for this to fill in uh, within a short time frame. Just that's how it works out here. Almost always see these quiet zones fill in with larger events. Uh, a little bit of deeper activity there off the Nankai Trough, a little bit further south towards Taiwan with a uh, super deep four-pointer. Keep an eye on that region there, the Nankai Trough. It's under quite a bit of strain here. And the earthquake activity happening all around it and occasional, an occasional deep event taking place there, um, leading to obviously further pressurization and strain upstream. But no big earthquakes to report there for that region uh, for now. 6.0, I believe that uh, has been reviewed. I just want to double check that and see. It has been reviewed. It sits in a major seismically active zone here, folks. I mean, it's one of the most active regions around the world uh, that uh, gets a lot of earthquake activity. All right, uh, trimmer yesterday. A little bit down there across Northern California. We'll check out uh, Trimmer later tonight once it come once it becomes available. As far as space weather activity goes, getting a little bit of uh, instability going on here in the last 24 hours with a number of sea flares. Also an M flare event from yesterday. Something's going on with the Space Weather Prediction Center in terms of their um, their network connection here. I don't. Just as I was about ready to hit the X there to refresh it, it came through. So. A number of C flares. It actually looks like we've had a number of low-grade M flares as well, just barely. But this right here letting me know that things are uh, unstable and uh, getting active out here. So let's take a look and see what we got. Just a little slow here still for the uh, Solar Ham site and the Space Weather Prediction Center. He's got the link there to the um, NASA site linked up to a Solar Ham site here. And... Um, his page loads pretty quickly, but it's the data that comes off of the uh, uh, space weather prediction site that takes a little while to load. Uh, but there's a number of flares happening out there on the eastern limb. Uh, let's take a look here at the complexity model of the sunspots. 
uh, massive, huge area up here on the northeastern quadrant of the sun. We'll watch that. A fairly complex activity. And, uh, well, I mean, nothing extraordinary out here in terms of complexity and, and major X flare potential. But, uh, you know, we've been seeing a little M flare activity recently from this area, the sunspot here. Looks like a newer region back up here as well. So we'll just kind of keep an eye on things here. Looks like maybe even this region is starting to grow a little bit more. Uh, increasing our flare threat out there. Not a huge threat. 10% chance for X flare. M flare at 45. I, I have mine elevated around 60%. Uh, I put that into effect here just a couple days ago because of the uh, uptick here in terms of complexity. And uh, we've been crackling here a little bit with some M flare activity. No major roars there in the forecast for now. Uh, real quick glance here at the next five uh, asteroid events or close approaches. Really nothing of any significance here. Looks like 117 miles away for a 13-foot car-sized asteroid. Not that big of a deal. It's actually a pretty small one. And everything else is millions of miles away. So we're pretty safe with respect to the ones that are being monitored. Nothing major for severe weather outlook uh, for now. Up into the Pacific Northwest, they're getting uh, hammered with uh, quite a bit of rain up there. That's going to intensify throughout the day today. And over the next couple days, a massive low pressure system going to slam into Washington and Oregon, bringing with it a whole bunch of rain and snow and a whole bunch of wind as well. So get ready for a powerful winter storm up there. Uh, not so much for the rest of the country. Got uh, fairly minimal conditions until looks like, well, even then that changed. It looks like some colder patterns here as we enter into March once again. But that's a ways out there. These models flip-flop quite a bit uh, this far out. That's March 11th, so that's a couple weeks away. This may not even play out, but uh, we'll check on that as we get a little bit closer to that time period. Not a whole lot here for the West Coast either, but... Maybe as we enter into the second week of March, that looks promising, hopefully. I hope that rings true because we need uh, need a little bit more rain out here. Not quite ready for 115 degrees. Uh, let's see, a little spike on Petrolia. That's Northern California. There's the uh, P wave from that, or uh, surface wave from that six-pointer showing up there in Japan. So that's that six-pointer S wave, surface wave down in Solomon Islands takes a little while for that to travel but uh, it is showing up quite nicely on the uh, Japan station New Zealand picked it up prior to that because well it's much closer in proximity to the six-pointer compared to Japan but a little spike of an earthquake in Northern California not showing up I haven't been looking at the seismograph stations all weekend I'm wondering how many of these events have been showing up here and not being reported I'm guessing there's probably a good handful of earthquakes here following the tremor events recently underneath this area but the earthquakes themselves not being uh, reported nothing big that's probably a little uh, probably a two-pointer maybe just below that all right uh what else we got here folks i think that's about it uh, i'm gonna just enjoy the day picked up some sprinkles overnight it's still cloudy uh, but warm. It kind of feels like spring out there. Kind of nice. Have a good day, folks. We'll catch you guys out here a little bit later on this Sunday uh, for the Sunday night update. Uh, in the meantime, stay safe out there. Have an earthquake plan, and we'll see you guys back here a little bit later.